Um, so welcome everyone um, on this call and thank you so much for giving us your time to join us. Uh, we hope we'll make it well worth your while with this fantastic program of speakers and talks we have for you today. Um, just a little bit about Gatekeeper. I'm sure most, most of you know Gatekeeper very well, um, but some here may not be quite so familiar. Uh, the Gatekeeper Trust was founded some 40 years ago by a small group of pilgrims headed by Sir George Trevelyan and Peter Dawkins and others. Um, <clears throat> and the Trust has developed over the years, but is generally is, is devoted to personal and planetary healing through pilgrimage, um, seeking to rediscover the ancient uh, art of pilgrimage as a way of journeying with an awareness of the sacred nature of our environment, which seems more deeply relevant this year uh, in the year of COP26 than ever before. Um, as Mike uh, may have mentioned, in the near future, recordings of today's talks will be made available on our website for all ticket holders. So if you can't avoid missing something today, um, you will be able to catch up or rewatch uh, on the website later. Um, also, the friends section of the website is now is new and full of um, interesting new content. So if you haven't had a chance to look at that, please do. And if you're not yet a friend, please consider joining us. Uh, be, as Mike says, there'll be an opportunity to ask questions at about 12.15 after the first three speakers. We're not operating the Zoom raised hand protocol, but if you have questions, please type them in the chat box. Preferably, if possible, saying to whom they're addressed, and we will do our best to direct them to the speakers in that Q&A session. So to start the day, our first speaker is Peter Dawkins. Uh, co-founder of and guiding light to the Gatekeeper Trust. Peter is a philosopher, a geomancer, visionary, and founder with his wife, Sarah, of the Zoan's Mystery School and the Francis Bacon Research Trust. So Peter will start off by dedicating the day uh, for us, and in his intriguing talk, will introduce the idea that the land itself is a grail and that the grail path is an initiatory path of service which can create the holy grail. So over to Peter Dawkins. Thanks very much, Stephen. And um, hello, everybody. Um, we're talking today about the walking the green path. So I've been asked to dedicate the candle for the day. So I'm going to dedicate the candle to exactly that, to walking the green path. So here's our lovely candle and a nice candle holder. <laughs> and um, perhaps as I dedicate the candle, you might just go into yourselves and just think to yourselves, um, what is the green path and how do I walk it? Or just attune to your own divine love. So we dedicate the candle today to walking the green path. Now the green, walking the green path, what does this really mean? Well, in my talk, I shall introduce the idea that the green path is the path of the grail, an initiatory path of service, wherein we can discover that not only each of us is a grail or vessel of consciousness, but also the land is a grail of consciousness, and that we can help make the land a holy grail just as we can make ourselves holy as holy grails. Ah, but first of all, what does green mean? Each of us can have our own ideas about green and see the colour green in different ways and shades, but generally and traditionally, green has some very specific meanings. For instance, the colour green can refer to the greening of nature. Such greening represents the life force operating within all, within all nature's life forms. So it was also seen as a symbol of eternal life. Then green as the central color of the rainbow 
is related to the heart and to heart love, the heart chakra being the central chakra of the seven main chakras and love being the life force that is in each of us. The Druids, I like the Druids, the Druids saw green not only as representing nature, but also the understanding in the symbolic sense that nature, the land, stands under the sky and the blue of the sky represents the wisdom which the intelligence of nature understands. For this reason, the Druids symbolize the land as a green stone, Merlin's green stone, in which lies the wisdom of the universe, hidden and waiting to be found. And the British Isles were referred to as the Emerald Isles, the Isles of the Hesperides, in the orchards of which Merlin sits, happily munching the golden apples of knowledge, knowledge of the wisdom that lies in the land. Moreover, not only in Celtic tradition, but also in Hebrew tradition, the emerald stone is, the, is symbolic of the grail, the stone that has fallen to earth, but is made holy and raised up to become the crown jewel of the universe. 